everybody. So some of you have been asking me about the difference between um, certain resonance structures and when things will resonate and you're not quite sure you can figure out exactly when something will happen. So let's take a look at um, carbonate ion, which is CO3, 2 minus, and carbonate, and minus, and carbonate has four plus three times six plus two electrons. In other words, it's got 24 total electrons that are valence that are going to be available in the structure. So we're gonna first put our least electronegative thing in the center. We're gonna go ahead and connect it with our oxygens. Now we know oxygens like to make two bonds. Um, so, but if we start off doing two bonds to everything, then we've already broken the octet rule with carbon. So we know that we can't do that because then it'll have more than eight and octet and uh, carbon is not an N equals three or greater atom. So therefore, we're gonna have to just place electrons, three, four, five, six, around this thing and see what happens. Oh, but wait, then carbon doesn't have one. And if we go into count all of our electrons right now, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, we have enough electrons, but the problem is carbon is left without an octet. Our only option is to make a double bond. All right, so now let's go ahead and count again. Each, everything has an octet at this current point in time. This oxygen's happy because we know oxygen wants to make two, um, two bonds. And if we count all these, we got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. We now have 24 electrons. Yay, that's good, right? Hmm. But why would this oxygen be more favorable than this one or this one? How can we treat this guy differently than these other ones? And the truth of the matter is we don't. Two of these electrons are actually delocalized, meaning they're not actually right there. And they're moving around the structure. They're moving around the structure to try to keep as many of these happy as possible. And that's actually exactly what we end up getting is that one of these bonds is actually shared between three oxygens. And this would actually be our final structure. This would be a resonance structure and it kind of indicates how it's, sh how it's um, being shared. Now, again, the reason we knew that is because this carbon is connected to three different oxygens and they're all the same, but one is treated differently. Even if we had two treated differently, it would resonate. So now the next question that's often asked at this point is what is the bond order? Well, let's say you have some apples. That's you. And you give your friends, you have three friends, they're all just hanging out, and you're like, hey, I wanna give you some apples. And you give each of your friend one apple, and then you have one more apple that you wanna share among them. Well, if you share this one apple among all three of your friends, they each get a third. So they each have one and one third, right? So, and now your no, apple is no longer there for you. Why didn't you get an apple? That's messed up. So if you go back up here, they all already have one bond, but the three of them are sharing this one. And that's why the bond order ends up equaling one and one third. They each get one and one third bonds. All right, so that's cool in terms of bond order and all this other stuff, but what about, what about the other example that we had? We had something that had an N, an O, a C, and a negative charge. And we're like, uh, how do we put this together? First of all, that's not the way the formula would be written, but we'd start with the most, uh, or with the least electronegative thing. That would be this one. Keep in mind that on the periodic table, electronegativity goes up. That's ignoring how bad that is. Goes up and to the right with the noble gases excluded. All right, so in this case, we have a carbon, a nitrogen, and an oxygen. A carbon's gonna be in the center, which means we have a nitrogen and oxygen on either side. Now, there are several different ways that we can do this. First, it's always good to count electrons. So we got five plus six plus four plus one extra electron from right there. Woo, my lean cuisine is done, can't wait. Okay. So we got five plus six plus four plus one, that's a total of 16 valence electrons. 
All right, so we go down here to place them, and we know carbon likes four bonds. We know nitrogen likes three bonds, and we know oxygen likes two bonds. But if we put three bonds here and two bonds here, now carbon's not gonna be happy. No matter what we do, not everybody's gonna be happy. So, instead, let's go ahead and try something, whatever it is, let's try something. And then we'll go look at the formal charges. So, <clears throat> let's go ahead and pair carbon to nitrogen. And then we put two there, we gotta put two here because carbon wants uh, two bonds. Go ahead and place the amount of uh, lone pairs so that each one has an octet. And then we'll calculate formal charge. Formal charge equals the valence electrons that thing has minus sticks minus dots. Okay, so we're looking for valence electrons minus sticks minus dots. If we can do it for each one, let's go ahead and start with oxygen. Oxygen has six valence electrons minus two sticks attached to it minus a total of one, two, three, four dots. So oxygen in this case has a zero formal charge. So carbon, it's got one, two, three, four. So it's got four valence electrons minus four sticks minus zero dots for a zero formal charge. And then we move on to nitrogen. Now nitrogen has five valence electrons minus two sticks minus four dots or negative one formal charge, negative one. All right, and that's great because the total overall charge, total formal charge should equal the compound charge. So in this case, our total overall charge, zero plus zero plus negative one equals a compound charge. That's awesome. But is there another way we can do this? Um, yeah, absolutely there is. And first let's go back and look at formal charge rules. So when we're looking at the formal charge, small formal charges are preferable. So if we have a negative one charge, that means we should be able to get two of them with zeros and one with a negative one. If we have the same non-zero formal charge on the uh, having the same non-zero formal charge on the same atoms or atoms next to each other is bad. Um, we don't have that in this case. We have two zeros next to each other, but that's it. But then this one. The more negative formal charge should be on the more electronegative atom. Well, let's go back over here. In this case, nitrogen is over here and oxygen is over here. If you look above the periodic table, oxygen is actually farther uh, farther to the right than nitrogen, and therefore this is less electronegative. Now you can go to another extreme, and you could draw something like um, this. And in all reality, this would also work if everything has an octet, everything's filled, it's all perfectly happy um, in terms of octet rules and having the correct number of electrons. But if you look at the formal charge, here would have a plus one, over here would have a minus two, and carbon would have a zero. This is not the most stable structure because it doesn't have the smallest formal charges. We know if it's negative one, we should be able to get all zeros and only one negative one. And that's not the case here. So, okay. So we know that that's not the structure. We now know that when we took away a bond from here to here, it got more negative. So when we take away a bond, it gets more negative. What do you think you do if you add a bond? And in fact, that's what we ought to do now is add one more structure. Which is very similar. Let's go ahead and take a carbon and add an extra bond this time and take one away from oxygen because we ultimately want the negative formal charge to be on oxygen. In fact, that's what we get. Over here will be a negative one, this will be a zero, and this will be a zero. And this is the most stable resonance structure. And what's important to note is that going back over here, this only really has, uh, it has resonance structures. So for example, you could, you could draw carbon 
to oxygen, to another oxygen, to another oxygen, of course, with all the electrons. And then you could draw another one over here where the oxygen's over here now. And all of these are resonance structures of carbonate, but they're all really identical because the electrons are delocalized and moving around. Now when we go to these ones, and we look at the difference between them, between this one, this one, and this one, we can see that their resonance structures, they're all technically possible structures, but this one is the most stable. And so when you're looking at different answers and sometimes get one or two different uh, variations of the same complex or the same uh, compound, make sure you go through and look at the formal charge to determine which one is actually the most stable one.